Hey Kings Youth, thank you so much for watching. We're starting a brand new series called Vibes. Uh, and it's a series, a four week series, where we're gonna talk about emotions. Yeah, that's right, I said emotions. Now before you turn off, but before you roll your eyes at me, I have a confession to make. Now, some of you probably have heard the story before, but um, as you might have known, I am quite the emotional person. Like, I'm the hype person of the friend group, you know what I mean? Like, I'm the person that if you say, yo, Bradford, let's go rob a bank, I'm like, let's go! I, like, I'm the hype guy. I mean, even with me and Ron, you know, I'm the hype guy. I am the emotional guy. But there was one particular day where I was actually uh, having a emotional day, which is a normal occurrence. Uh, and I was making waffles that morning. How many of you guys love frozen waffles? I love frozen waffles, it's one of my favorite breakfast. And I was making frozen waffles, I was super excited. I do my usual four. I have four waffles and I uh, put syrup on every single waffle. <laughs> I love my syrup. And so I am making these waffles and my wife is in the bathroom, she's getting ready and my son is watching TV and I'm making waffles and I'm super excited about making these waffles, man. I'm feeling myself because if I have a great breakfast in the morning, I know that I'm gonna have a great day. And so I, I make these waffles and I cut them and what I didn't recognize was that my plate of waffles was on the edge of um, the island, right? Or the table and I was cutting them. Of course, I'm, I'm excited, I'm hungry to eat these waffles. I cut them and the whole plate flips over and my waffles went all over the floor, syrup all over the floor, and literally my immediate reaction, I screamed. I was like, no! <laughs> like legit, you can ask my wife right now. I reacted so emotionally, I was so broken hearted that my waffles, were gone, the syrup was all over the place, I had no waffle, and you know what's funny? That was the last few waffles of the of the box, and so my day was ruined. But my wife ran in, she ran in, she said, what, what happened, are you okay? Did you stub your toe or something? Like, did you hurt yourself, are you bleeding? <laughs> and legit, I had somewhat of a few tears on my face, I'm like, babe, look, I dropped my waffles, <laughs> and she was like, you're stupid, and she left, and walked away. Oh, it was not my most proudest moment, but even me, I need some growth in the area of my emotions. You know, some of you are like that. Some of you are like me. You love emotions. You want to feel everything. You you are that hype person like me. You, like you're the one who has a music playlist for every single emotion, right? You're the you're the type of person who 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 even cries at commercials. <laughs> the Cheerios. The Cheerios. Like, right? Like you are that person when it comes to emotions. Or maybe you're the person that, that loves the good emotions. You love to feel good, you love to feel happy, and you kind of ignore kind of the bad ones because hey, who has time for the bad emotions? We want the good emotions. Or you're that person that doesn't even wanna think about emotions because let's be honest, it can be a bit scary and be a bit hard to understand. No matter how you feel about emotions, we can agree that emotions can be difficult and they can be tricky and really hard. You know, when it comes to emotions and feelings, it's, it's really hard to understand because, you know, emotions are these little intangible things like the movie Inside Out. Maybe if you watched it, you see joy and, and all these little characters in your head and like these little things that no one tells me actually controls my life sometimes. Like sometimes my anger or my guilt or my fear or my anxiety or my happiness, these things drive my life, but no one actually takes time to teach me what it means to handle and to rule my emotions. 
You know, some of you, you act on your emotions. You feel it, you do it, right? If someone speaks bad about you, you talk bad about them. If someone hurts you in hockey, you go and hurt them back. If someone, you know, spoke to you wrongly or someone looked at you, like you, you better make sure I don't bite you, right? Or maybe if you're hungry or hangry or if you're sleepy, you're the one who bites people, right? Like literally today, or no, sorry, yesterday, my daughter Hazel bit my daughter and of course, I asked her, I said, why did you bite Eden? She was like, because I'm tired. I'm like, well, you don't bite people when you're tired, Hazel Grace, right? She was acting out on her emotion. Or maybe when you feel negative emotion, you do what most people do is you shut down. When you feel anger or when you feel lonely or, or when you feel tired or when you feel cranky, you do this thing of hiding from your emotions. You go to food, you go to Netflix, you go to video games, hello, you go to your room, you turn the lights off, you watch movies, you do whatever it takes to hide from your emotions because you know that if you would just sit one second by yourself that you would feel all the emotions and all the anxiety and all the fear and all the anger. Or maybe you are someone who went through some, something traumatic. Maybe you've experienced a death. Maybe you've experienced a loss. Maybe you experienced grief. Or maybe you've experienced 2020, right? The year 2020 was a year where it really wreaked havoc on my emotions. And maybe you're numb. You don't feel the good or the bad. You just exist because so much has attacked your emotions, the ups and downs of the year. Uh, you know, wear a mask, can't wear a mask. You know, talk to my friends, can't talk to my friends. Be with my friends, can't be with friends. Can't be with my family or, you know, and so there's this, this stuff that really attacks our emotions. So thus we become numb. There's this quote that says, emotions are like toddlers. You can't let them drive you, but you can't actually throw them in the trunk either, right? So if we can't spew out our emotions or if we can't numb our emotions, so what do we do with our emotions? And here's what we do. We process our emotions. Maybe you've heard that from your parents or from a therapist or from a friend that, that you actually kind of have to like slow yourself down and process your emotions. You know that word process means to, means to examine, it means to organize, that we actually have to take time to organize how we feel. And so to process, we have to recognize where they come from and they come from God. They come from the one who created us. God made emotions to enhance our life and not to jack them up, right? When we watch a movie that we really, really love and we feel the story and we, and we feel the narrative or, or when we eat some food or some cheesecake, oh, glory be to God, or some chicken or some uh, candy and we're like, oh, praise God for this kid. Like, like God made emotions to enhance our life and to ultimately to fulfill the promise that he says to give us a life that's more abundant and more fulfilling. And yet we still need to process and take time to examine our emotions. And this is how I know, because if you look at Jesus, Jesus who was fully God, he was the son of God, people tend to forget that Jesus was actually human. Jesus was fully God, but yet fully human, and Jesus felt it all. He felt sad. He felt grief. He was ecstatic about his friends. He felt joy. He, he smiled. He felt compassion. He felt sympathy. He also got angry when people misused the, the temple. He also got angry towards his, his disciples when they were trying to reject kids. Like, like, like God had emotions. He felt stuff. And yet, even up to his death, he felt love. He felt emotion. And yet, he did not sin with his emotions. How did Jesus know how to handle his emotions? How did Jesus know how to handle these things? Like, like how did Jesus know how to, to relate to our human existence? Because he knew how to process them. He knew how to, how, to, how to slow down and manage and even think about his emotions. And we see this even to the, to the very moment where he was about to die. 
He was in the garden. And, and he was under distress so much that the Bible says that he started to sweat drops of blood. Have you ever been that distressed before where you were starting to drip sweats of blood? And so he was distressed and he was tired and, 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 and he was anxious and he was depressed. But yet he said this in Luke chapter 22. And this is what he says. He says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. This is the depth of the emotion that Jesus was feeling. He's like, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to, to die like this. This is excruciating pain. This is distressful. This is hard. This is anxious. But yet he processes with the Father. He surrenders his emotion. He surrenders this, this current moment that he was in and the heaviness of this moment. And he says, God, yet not my will, but your will be done. He goes to the Father and says, God, here's how I'm feeling. I'm sad, I'm depressed, and I don't want to do this. But yet Jesus gives him the strength and the grace to do what he came to do and to accomplish the mission that he came to accomplish. And that was to go on the cross and to, and to die for our sins and to bring us new life and to bring in a new kingdom and to unite a new family under God. And this is why Jesus is the safest place to process your emotions. You know, the Bible says that that the Lord is a strong tower and that the righteous run to it. It means that, that when we're feeling perplexed, when we're feeling challenged or when we're feeling stressed or afraid or angry or guilty, or you just watched your waffles fall to the ground and you're screaming at your wife because she doesn't understand the value of waffles, that we can come to God with our weaknesses and with our emotions and process it and sit with it. But here's the reality, is that when we feel hard emotions or when we feel stressful emotions, what do we do? We run from God rather than run to God. We run from God because maybe we think that he doesn't understand or, or, or maybe he can't handle the stuff that I'm feeling or, or it's just hard because uh, he's not physically here. So I can't really talk to him. And so we just don't like run to God. We we run from him because, you know, we just doesn't think he understands. But he does understand. And he's a big God and he can handle whatever you're feeling today. Or maybe we don't run to God because of shame. Maybe we've done something that has provoked some guilt or shame in our life. Maybe we've, we've lied. Maybe we've told our parent that we hate them. Or maybe we've said something to a friend behind their back that was not nice. Or maybe we said a few words that were not kind. Or, or, or maybe we saw some things on the computer or on the internet or on cable that was not pleasing to him. And so we run from God. That's kind of our natural bent is to run from him rather than run to him. He's the one who has all the answers and, and, and the peace and the refuge and the safety that we long for, but yet we run from him. Now, when we don't choose to process our emotions with God, here's what happens. Our emotions become more harmful to us. When we don't process them with God or take time to organize them with God, they actually become more destructive to us and eventually will blow up eventually we'll hurt somebody, eventually we'll say something to people that we didn't really mean. Sometimes we'll, we'll lash out or have attitude that's not like God, but God wants us to process with him. And so what do we do? So first things first, we label it, right? There's this term that says you name it, you tame it, right? Like the first thing, like when you feel something, you have to name it. You have to like label it. Like, 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 what are you feeling? And so the ways we do that is whether a journal or speak to a parent, a friend, a friend, a trusted friend, a mature friend, and we just name it. Say, you know what? I feel angry. Why? Because I haven't slept, <laughs> right? Or I feel angry because... Uh, this person betrayed me or I feel lonely because right now I can't talk to anyone around my school because of 
restrictions. You need to label it and, and, and then say, why do you feel that way? Why do you feel angry? And, and then the next step is to say, what do I do with that emotion? And so maybe that means you talk to a person and say, you know what, that hurt me when you said that to me. Or maybe you need to eat something. Maybe that will help. That would curb the hunger. Or maybe for you, you need to sleep. Sleep more. Take it, like Stop staying up late playing Fortnite all night. Like seriously, go to bed because you know that you need it. You need to label it. You need to name it and tame it. Because when you do, you don't allow your emotions to rule you. You know, in a car, there's these, these lights in a car that, that kind of show or that kind of show you what's wrong in the car. So maybe like an oil change or maybe your brakes are, are getting fried or maybe you just need gas. God made your emotions to be the warning lights in your body, in your mind, in your system to warn you when you are about to be destroyed or when you feel something, right? Maybe your emotions is trying to tell you something that is happening inside of you that is deeper. And maybe like the anger you feel is, is not per se what that person did to you, but maybe it's an anger from last week, or maybe it's an anger from weeks ago, or from last month ago. And God wants us to deal with the emotions so that we're not being ruled by our, our emotions. You know, I'm going to be like super real with you. When I first got married, um, you know, of course I don't have a great relationship with my father. And so my father missed my wedding. He said he was going to come. He said he was going to be there. He said he was going to show up. But yet the, set, the Friday before my wedding, he, he phoned me up. He spoke to my mom and he said, hey, I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to be there. Tell Bradford I'm sorry. And I was watching my wife walk down the aisle and tears was flowing from my face, not because my wife was the most beautiful thing in the world at that moment, but because I was hurt. I was grieving, I was hurt. And from that moment, I mean, for years, I've carried such anger and hurt towards my dad because what he did, and so much so, I was lashing out at people, I was lashing out at my kids, I was being angry, I was being just really, really hurt, but what I realized was that my, my anger was not my kids, but like my, my anger was the grudge and the feelings that, that I had towards my father. And sometimes our emotion shows us and, and kind of points back to something that might be a little deeper that we need to dig into and take time to, to process. You know, Jesus came to give us peace, right? Like his, his last few words, he said, hey, the last thing I want to give you is my peace. Not as the world gives you, but my peace. You know, the world's peace is to numb out, right? Do drugs, do alcohol, do weed, watch movies, watch Netflix. Like, like the world's peace is to numb out, but God's peace points to a person. And that peace is Jesus, and when we choose to run to God and when we choose to, to run to Jesus as our safe place there, we can process them with him. And there he will show us his peace and show us his joy and, and give us the grace and the strength to deal with the stuff that's inside of me. You have it. I have it. We all have it. Jesus is the safest place to process your emotions. Even when you are just angry at the world around you and you're like, why is this happening? Coronavirus, I'm lonely, I'm starting grade six and I've made no friends. And you're like, oh, I'm frustrated. But even if you are angry with God, and I've had those, those, those moments in my life where I've been angry with God, like, God, why is this happening? Why, is, why are babies being killed? Like, what is happening? I have been angry with God, but God is the safest place for those questions, those doubts, those anger, and even your worst emotions. And that's what makes God so beautiful and so amazing and so, and so trustworthy is that God doesn't want to just be a part of the, the good moments, but God wants to be part of the, the worst moments of your life. Jesus said this in uh, Matthew 
11, he said this. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle. Man, that's beautiful. And humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus invites you to be in his presence and to experience his peace when you are feeling just crazy all around you. Jesus is the safest place to process your emotions. So what are you feeling? Okay. Why are you feeling it? And what are you going to do about it? And so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you today. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you are the safest place to process our emotions. God, we choose not to hide from our emotions and we choose not to spew it out, but God, we choose to take time to slow ourselves down and to organize our thoughts and our feelings and to process them with you. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And God, be with us today as we start groups and have these conversations on what we're going to do about the things we feel. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.